understanding others and empathy. I'm gonna start this out with a quote by Heinz Kohut. He said, if there is one lesson that I have learned during my life as an analyst, it is the lesson that what my patients tell me is likely to be true. That many times when I believed that I was right and my patients were wrong, it turned out, though often after prolonged search, that my rightness was superficial, whereas their rightness was profound. That is one of my favorite quotes because it really highlights to me how important it is to have empathy and understand others. <clears throat> we all think that we are right and that our perspective and our perspectives are very important and worth, worth a lot, but and not but, <laughs> and just understanding another human and having them understand you, if you've experienced, we've all experienced that, is just the most beautiful and can be the most life-changing thing to just know you are truly understood that someone put away their judgments and their thoughts to fully take on what it's like to be you and understand you. So, <clears throat> There's so many aspects to understanding others. I mean, you've probably heard of how understanding others is the key to success. A lot of really successful people have explained that what, what they do, successful business people especially, is they turn problems into opportunities. So to turn problems into opportunities, you have to know what others consider a problem. Um, you could also do it for, for yourself. Obviously, if you encounter a problem and you're thinking, oh, I wonder if everyone else has this issue, <clears throat> you can realize, hey, maybe I'm not so different than others and realize it's a problem and turn it into <clears throat> a business that helps solve those problems. Uh, respecting other people's preferences and opinions, super important. Um, there are a lot of, there are some barriers to empathy. So we all know that empathy is good and helpful, but then why don't people use empathy so much? Why is there so much polarization between I'm right, you know, between just experiences? I mean, if you really thought about almost any controversial sub subject or topic, when, if you really put your, thoughts and opinions aside just for a little bit and you ask the, the, other, the other person, whatever it may be, whatever perspective they may have, you ask them and really get to the bottom of what they really think and feel and then why. And you really, really get, get down to why and for what purpose. You'll get to the highest purpose. And that highest purpose is usually not too different than our own highest purposes. It's just usually it's the way that people believe you'll get to the higher highest purpose is that that's what is is different. It's not the actual I believe the highest purpose, you know. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm speaking too chunked up in metaphors. <laughs> I should come up with these examples before I start these trainings, huh? Not off the top of my head. Um, <clears throat> let's just say one, let's just say there's a couple and they're talking about getting a new car. And one of them says, I do not want to get a new car. And the other one says, we need a new car. <clears throat> and both of them feel very, very strongly about that as a family, the what's best for their family is to either get a new car or not to get a new car. <sighs> so on the one hand, to get a new car, maybe their, the purpose would be to have a safe vehicle for the family, a safe vehicle that feels good and feels nice and, and gives them a sense of security and safety. And maybe it feels good that it gives them more energy and makes them more productive. And maybe it helps them at work be viewed as more, um, be taken more seriously in some professions. Um, people do judge people by cars. <laughs> and then on the other hand, the, the, other, the other spouse could say, no, I don't think we should get a new car because 
that will mean we have less money for other things, for the kids to do extracurriculars or for us to travel or for us to save and, or um, cars don't uh, mean any, anything as a car goes by. <laughs> cars don't, are, uh, we shouldn't be judged by cars. Well, if you keep asking each one, if it, what is the purpose of having a safe car? What is the purpose of looking like you have a nice car around other people? The, the highest purpose might become something like, I want my family to feel good and, and accomplished, or I want people to at work to take me seriously as a business person or, or whatever it is, <clears throat> so that I'll make more money for the family. And then the other side could be, I want to save money so we have more money for the family, or I want to not have a sports car so that we have a, a our, this other type of car that's older, but another type is more safe for the family. And so if you get to the highest needs, maybe both of them really wants the family to be safe and prosperous. It's just how they believe they'll get there is different, whether to get a car or not get a car, but really the highest at the very highest peak is the same purpose. So that's what that's an example. Car example, while the car went by. <laughs> okay, so um, so a barrier to empathy can be fear, obviously. When people get very scared and feel like their way is the only way to keep themselves safe or keep them from losing something really important, then that is um, that can drive people to not want to have empathy because they feel threatened by the other side, maybe winning or <clears throat> overpowering them, their feeling or knowledge that of what is important. <clears throat> Another barrier to empathy can be self-centeredness, just not wanting to be interested in another person or anything other than self, or Sometimes people get very, very driven. They get very driven to do, do something or to get something done. And regardless of who's in the way, they are like, it's my way or the highway. And it's kind of a mentality. Uh, it usually doesn't help them much in the long run. And then there are also extreme issues like psychopathy and narcissism when people have personality issues that, um, that really affect how they, whether they're even interested in understanding others, or if they are, maybe they might use it not to help the highest good or help others, but to help uh, create ways for them to use that knowledge to get manipulate a situation. But we're not going to go into that one today. <laughs> we'll just keep it simple, a little bit lighter. Um, <clears throat> taking someone else's perspective is really important and it it relies on our abilities to share emotions with others and but it also it's really important to regulate our own emotions when we do this as you as you can imagine if to take another person's perspective takes some emotional intelligence someone who is not able to manage their own emotions and gets angry or triggered very easily is not going to be able to take another person's perspective they're going to feel angry and and take everything personal personally so it takes some skill in that area which is a great skill to to um, exercise and develop <clears throat> and it is a skill that you can develop to, to understand depth and awareness. And after you do that, you can start to predict attitudes and expectations, and you can start to really notice intentions of others that may be the same or different from our own. <clears throat> um, so becoming sensitive to that, if, if you're a sensitive person, or if you just develop that skill of Correct and correctly reading other people, it, it becomes a sensitivity that you can kind of hone in on and become very good at. And it can very help you, help you in, um, in all aspects of your life. It's important to make sure that as you become better and better at this, that you use it for good 
and that you are um, creating win-win situations with other people. Because in the long run, if you um, create win-win situations, uh, it's it's going to help you too. It's going to help them. It's going to be help you. It's just going to make your your world better and better and better. <laughs> so interpreting interpreting what what and why people do the do what they do and what they want, uh, respecting differences, <clears throat> interpreting their words is really important. It takes maturity to be respectful of another person's opinion and personal beliefs. And being disrespectful or not able to do that is the quickest way to cause separation and division and division among people. And and division and you know that doesn't meet anyone's highest good. <laughs> so um, everyone's brain is wired to be different. And our differences are beautiful things. And one thing I've noticed in traveling is just how beautiful and wonderful it is to encounter someone who thinks differently, who thinks or just lives differently. It's just so beautiful and, and mesmerizing. And oh, I just love that. That's one of my favorite parts of, of traveling. It's not just going to the all-inclusive thing where everyone's a tourist. No, I love going to where there are, um, I use the transportation, the public transportation. I go to the grocery stores. I love meeting locals. And I love just having conversations about life and just realizing how there are so many differences. But at the same time, as you ex we experience those differences, there's so many similarities too, because just as I was saying earlier, when you when you get to the higher level of what's behind that, we are not that different. So it's just so cool. It's like we're, we're different and it's beautiful. And then we're so similar also. And that's beautiful too. Just really, really nice. And um, all right. So empathy and understanding others, you know, uh, try to understand their personality, why they do things. Um, another one of the, another quote I want to end with is by the Dalai Lama. He says, only the development of compassion and understanding for others can bring us the tranquility and happiness we all see. Compassion and understanding, real compassion and understanding will really bring us what we really want what we really need and what we really want. And what I'm, I'm just gonna read the one I started out with. This is just so good. <laughs> one more time. If there is one lesson that I have learned during my life as an analyst, it is the lesson that what my patients tell me is likely to be true. That many times when I believed that I was right and my patients were wrong, it turned out though often after prolonged search, that my rightness was superficial, whereas their rightness was profound by Heinz Kohut. Something to keep in mind in our day-to-day -day lives, understanding others and the beauty of empathy.